Hi everyone and welcome to another Hashtag Ask Jim and I think we're up to episode 54 or 55 and we're going to get straight into it because we, it's quite interesting, it's the top of, topic of the week. So we have done, a, the team posted this earlier today which is Jim's toilet paper delivery and um, it's gone off. Uh, so it's gone off online. We've got Aussie Az and some other pages have shared it as well. Jim's meaning it's... quite a good logo, actually. It's actually, actually you know, it's, it's got a, the letter, lettering right and the toilet roll. I think it's done well. It's a ripping design. It's on brand. And, uh, might even do it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we might want to, well, you might want hey, to mention was, that. It was a new division, Jim's toilet paper delivery. Jim's toilet paper delivery, Jim's prepping, that sort of stuff. Yeah. So maybe talk about that a little bit, Jim, because you've got quite an interest in it, actually, which is quite uh, interesting, I, I think. Do. I do. Yeah. I sort of feel... Um, I sort of feel exonerated somehow because I've been saying this for years <laughs> that people should have, you know, a year's supply of food on tap and this kind of stuff and grow your own veggies and fruit trees and stuff if you can and, and just be prepared. Well, what I didn't expect is that toilet paper, I mean, we're coming to the apocalypse, you know, you've got your place overrun by disease or whatever it is and the first thing you worry about is toilet paper. I would have thought that, the, you know, food might have or water. Why toilet paper? It's quite interesting. It's quite a creature comfort, so um, we're yeah. quite spoiled here. So, you know what people like. So there is a based on some research, there is a division in there, Jim. If you wanna, if anyone wants to do it. Well, I mean, Jim's Homefresh could do it. I reckon it'd be a good one for them. Jim's Homefresh. You, 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 so you can take the fruit <laughs> in, and you could you could sort of help going out at the same time. It helps at both ends. I mean, why well, not? Well, that's true. It's a total solution, isn't it? They're all they're all total front end and back end solution. Back end solution. Pardon the, pardon the pun there. It uh, definitely is. It's a ripping one, isn't it? So, um, yeah, we're talking about, but you have a, you do your own food prep and stuff as well, don't you? Yeah. Which is quite yeah. interesting, I think. And look, anybody be crazy not to do this? And look, let's face it, the coronavirus is probably not going to be, you know, the new Black Death or anything like that because, mm. you know, it's, they're likely to develop a, a vaccine and those kind of things. But it's a sort of a sign of something that could happen. I mean, there could be bad genetically engineered, really bad genetically engineered viruses around in the future because people don't know how to do that, make those things these days. And you could get EMP, you can get economic breakdown, you can get war with the Middle East, which cuts off our supply of war. I mean, there's so many things, attack on the computer system. Yep. There's just so many things that go wrong. People ought to be prepared. Our, our society is not as... And even as though you sort of 1% chance in the next decade, I mean, you're talking about your family's life. That's true. You, you pay for house insurance, and the chance of your house burning down is a lot less than one percent. So, mm. so, so why not? Why not protect yourself? I just think it's it's logical. People think it's extreme and it's crappy, but it's not. I mean, do you, you laugh at somebody because they got insu house insurance? Do you laugh at somebody because they got car insurance? Why not insure your family? Why not? Mm. Business it doesn't really cost anything because all you do is you buy your food in a bit in advance. Well, maybe don't talk about. We talked about your eight-year-old rice today. Yeah. So I thought it was quite interesting. I had no idea. Well, what I did, and this is back um, 2012, yeah. um, you get 20 kilo uh, buckets, plastic buckets with, with lids, and they've got little handles, so they're quite nifty. You buy um, mylar bags, and the, the bags come with an oxygen absorber, a little blue packet about that size. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you... I should have put one on here. You actually. should have put an example. But I'll, next I'll week. I'll do it, we'll next, do it week. next week. I'll show you what, what yeah. it is. So and then you and then you basically put the the rice into the bag. You put it in the thing. Then you put it in the in the bucket, which just holds it steady and mm -hmm. protects against you know rats and anything like that. Then you put the sticker in, and then you iron you iron the the the, the mylar bag, which so makes it absolutely watertight and and airtight. And I I've been you know we, our rice that I ate tonight just just 15 minutes ago is eight year old rice. Eight year old rice. And I cannot t you cannot tell the difference. My wife's a Chinese. She knows what good rice is like, and it's just fine. Eight year old rice. So there you go. Yeah. If you have rice at Jim's house, he's eight year old rice. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give eight year old rice. <laughs> I'm just going to see how long it lasts for. But I don't see why it doesn't show any signs of deterioration at all. You know they've dug up they've dug up grains from from the like the pyramids mm -hmm. you know, thousands of years ago, and they still they still sprout. Mm. Grains properly sealed can can do very very well. So there we go. So if you've got an interest in doing a Jim's prepping division or Jim's toilet. Yeah, if there's anybody market. out there who is interested in this, I'd, I'd love to set up a new division, Jim's whatever zombie apocalypse. <laughs> call it what you like, but I reckon there's I reckon there's a market in this because we could show people how to do it. We could we could do a package of, of food. We say, okay, what do you eat? What do you normally eat? All right, let's put a package together. We'll deliver to your home. Ten years supply of of no, not 10 years, but years supply of basic food, you know, enough to cover nutritional needs, you know, salt and, and rice or wheat or whatever you eat, and, 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 and you do it on, on, a, on, a, on a, you know, like a, a line of credit or something like that, so it doesn't cost you anything. And in fact, you'd save money, mm. unlike, unlike house insurance, which is money down the drain, with the <laughs> stuff you eat. And all you've got to do is replace it. 
So there you go. The Bourbons do that. It's it's a great idea. Mm. Well, it's an interesting one. It's gone off today, so there's definitely a market for it. So well, at least for toilet paper, anyway. We'll, we'll definitely know what toilet paper. If you've got room, one. I mean, when yeah. when the whole disaster's over, why not get a few extra extra toilet paper? You never know; it might be worth a fortune in the apocalypse. Well, there's a bloke online on Facebook Marketplace selling a, I think it's 36 rolls for so 2,500 dollars, 86 dollars a roll. Yeah. What you buy? Oh, if anybody wants to offer that, man, I've got some. I've got some spare. <laughs> <laughs> I'm to check on Facebook Marketplace after this. There we go. There's your millions done for you. Oh, All right. Dear. So now what we're trying to do with Ask Jim as well is we want to encourage franchisees and franchisors to leave more questions and comments. So if you are a franchisee who watched this, which we do have a lot, let it know in meetings that Jim does ask anything. It's the most up-to-date way to keep up to date with Jim's. Yeah, you, hear, you hear stuff here before First, anywhere else. Exactly right. Even, so, before, even before the franchise, which nobody reads anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> but we did a video uh, just before saying that, and we had actually a question come via Ask Jim. So you can leave one anonymously or you can leave your name. So Adrian Disney, uh, who's a mowing franchisee up and down from Jim's Mowing, so thanks, Adrian, for watching and leaving the questions, has put... So a question on mowing trailers. I've seen some black trailers from a different division, which probably fencing. They look good and do stand out. What are the chances of one day allowing mowing trailers to be black or green? So having another option. I don't mind. Um, these kind of things basically tend to be decided by the franchisees rather than by us. Mm. You know, we, we had a, like, like you, if you go to, to New, uh, Tasmania, you actually see the, the logo as Jim's Mowing and Garden, Garden Care. Care. And in WA as well. Because yeah. the local guys decide that's what they wanted. Mm. And, and uh, it seems to have a little fractional, you, you fractionally get more gardening jobs in, in, in Tasmania than other states. So it, I don't mind. I mean, we did the same thing with, with the, um, used to be handyman division, and there was a vote and they changed it to building maintenance, and they voted to change it back to handyman again. It's kind of, a, a lot of it's, Jim's is... <laughs> There's, there's, there's certain fundamentals that we won't change, and that's anything to do with service to franchisees and service to customers. But most other things are very much up to ha what franchises want. It's an interesting one because if you look at the book, like that, that Brunswick Green, I think it's Brunswick Green or whatever yeah, the colour is. Mid Brunswick right? Green. Mid Brunswick yeah, Green is synonymous one. with the logo. So how would it go changing black with that? I don't know, but it's always an idea, I guess. They do, they do stand out. The black, the fencing ones look really great. And, I don't um, really mind. Actually, I tell you what, does, does look good. Have you seen those um, Jim's plumbing? The oh, the vans, oh yeah, the they silver have metallic really ones. They really bright yeah. metallic, they just, people just, oh, Now, wow. the, the gold one, and the, I think the gold one got some complaints because the sun reflects yeah, the off sun it, so blinds sun. drivers. But there's a green one yeah. too, which is, the green it, ones it, do well. it costs more to do it because it's a special kind of covering, but we could Absolutely. do that. That would really stand Well, out. imagine one of those green as a mowing trailer. It'd be, you'd go off, I reckon. <laughs> like a special, like, 10-year tra trailer, just be that, that type of green, that foil it, it, green. It draws a lot of attention, those ones. It does. It really does. People, people notice them. <laughs> so what's the answer for Adrian then? So Adrian's made that suggestion because it's a mowing gift. So you, you own the mowing gift. So Well, I, I'd say we put it up to a referendum and if people want to do it, let them do it. Okay. So that's a, if there's enough of it, interest, people would like black trailers. The only thing a slight concern I have is in terms of visibility, that, you know, a green trailer stands out more against yeah. um, yeah. I'd like people to run into them at night and stuff. Well, my, the mowing's one I think is just so synonymous with the green, but like I don't know if it would get up or not. But if that's what franchisees would want, that's what they. If we had a significant number of franchisees and franchisors who said we'd like this as the new look, well, an alternative look anyway, because some divisions yeah, have a couple, right? Possibly. Mm. Um, maybe maybe you do it state by state or something like that. Yeah. So what I say is for Adrian to email you, right, and then email a suggestion for a referendum, or yeah, we give it to the mowing giver. Well, we can put it through, and we can, we can pass it around and see if there's any interest in the whole thing. I mean, I mean, we don't run around referendum without some indication that you have some support. So, yeah. if there's any mowing franchises out there, and you think black would be, Bruh. yeah, it's a, it's a first one for email us. Email me, Jim at Jim We have it with vehicles with some divisions sometimes. Now, there's a yeah. set standard vehicle, and then some people want to go. Oh, I need a got a different color, or whatever. So, we, we generally have the 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 attitude at Jim's is the core stuff, the service things are non-negotiable, but everything else is up for grabs. People. Don't quite realise how. I wouldn't say it's a democracy, but it's very, very participatory, and, and most decisions actually to change actually go through our advisory committee. True. And people would look at the minutes of the advisory committee and think that's the board of directors of the company. Well, it isn't actually. Mm. It has certain powers, like it can, it can act as a gatekeeper any changes to the manuals and so forth. But um, we're open to it. If people think that's a better idea, it's not. It's not core. And I would say if you're a franchisee or franchisor, the best way to get that done is actually comment on here because it's a lot easier for us to write it down and give you an answer real time or Jim for to give you an answer anyway. So David McDonald's gone, have you got any toilet paper? I'm nearly out. So you have some spare ones. We're charging $50 <laughs> a roll, David. 
50 bucks a roll. Oh, that's a, that's a precedent now. <laughs> it's 50 bucks. So it's market. It's a global market. I got, quite, market, I got right. quite a bit of it. So uh, if you want to, <laughs> you to pay for it, I don't mind. So, guys, make sure you leave a comment or question as well. But seriously, so, people, if you're going to if you're going to store up a food, look at food. I mean, toilet paper, you can use leaves and branches and all kinds of things. I mean, yeah, you can do the old bushman's toilet with a eucalyptus leaf. You can do that right. sort of stuff. I know well, back but, in the bush. But, but, but for heaven's sake, you know, if you're running out of food to eat, it, it's more serious. <laughs> That's true. Why on earth is a run on toilet paper? I do not know. Now we've got a now we've got a question here for well, comment from John Render saying, "If it ain't broke, don't fix it." That could be correct. All right, so Vicky Sherman. I've got a feeling that the black mowing trailer wouldn't get off the ground. Sorry. Mm. Yeah, it does look good, but I don't think for mowing it's a you know, green. The green's so synonymous. It's an icon, isn't it? That yeah, colourway. It is. Jim's has always been green. That's it. So I think it's the, they have to wear these high vis shirts with the yellow and stuff. That always looks a bit mm. not as good as the old green. But I know we do have to do it for safety. Oh, reasons, safety. But, yeah, no, I won't say it's safety first. I don't want any of my French <laughs> to get hurt, but uh, all the same. That's we used to say in the old days when when people were really really Jim's loyalists, the, you, I, they bleed green. Mm. That's true, they do bleed green. Mm. Dave McDonald's gone here. I would have thought that chicken noodle soup would have been the thing to buy now. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. Well, anything yeah. to last. Anything to last. So let's go here and a comment from someone. This is a good suggestion. All right, so here we go. My suggestion is that can you have on your website where we can put in our postcode in search, and list of Jim's services are available in my area. It is a hassle for you for quotes for different services and you get emails saying that the service is not available in my area. So that's in regards to the process and the booking. It's a good idea actually. I think it's a good one. So you want it, but it means you need to front load the allocation system into the front end. So what we do is we gather all the details first, then put it through the allocation but system. But natural fact, when you, when you book a job online, I think at the end of it, it actually, once you put your details in, your address in, it actually, and, and you book the job, it gives you a list of other available services. It does it after, but what she's saying yeah, is to front end it. So rather than going through the process, I have to give you all my details to know if a franchisee is in my area. Why can't I just give you a postcode and service to know the franchisees in my area? Uh, well, part of the reason is because it doesn't always precisely mean it. Because what will happen is you might have a postcode divided amongst more than Correct. one territory. Yep. So it matters which street you're in. Mm. So it's it's kind of not it's it's done by address. You have to actually put your full address in before you absolutely know whether somebody can look after you. Yeah, and it'd be good. Look, it'd be good. It also depends on the service too. True. So you might have a a for example, you might be down be able to get mowing done, but you can't get um, gutter clearing done, or you can't get large area mowing done. So it's it's actually because each each franchisee determines which jobs they're going to take. Yes. And, and that can even vary from day to day and from week to week. So it's kind of, you really have to know what you're looking for. It's, it's because, because we very precisely, so if a franchisee says, I just want mowing, I don't want to do any gardening or gutter clearing or anything, I just want mowing, we'll put them down for that. Correct, yeah. And another franchisee might say, I just want gutter clearing, nothing else. So it's kind of, you have to know the actual service and you have to know the full address. Full address. Yeah, you do. It's not just to be an inconvenience to people. If we could do it the other way, of yeah. course, but we just have it's to It's frustrating because we've got like, our unserviced ratio is rising at like 28% last figures. Yeah. It's, it's, it's getting higher every year as, as the, the, the sheer volume of work is rising and we're just not growing a franchisee network fast enough to cope with it. Well, clients, well, customers, customers obviously hate it, but so do our call center operators, for example, have to do the call and say, they, they they go, what do you mean? They spend so much time yeah. looking back work, which is, which is terrible. Mm. Actually, Jim's Plus is getting off the ground quite well, so we're getting about 15% of our unserviced leads are now getting passed out to French to um, independent yeah. contractors, which is good. And some of them who have become Jim's actually too, which is even better. Vicky Sherman's gone, no, it doesn't. So yeah, it's not, it's not a, that's the lady who left the question, so it's not a good thing. Um, the, yeah, look, it's just one of those things, the allocation system franchisees, it's just, if we could front load it, we could, but we can't. Yeah. It's one of those things. It, look, the, the great thing in the future will be that um, if we can actually recognise when somebody calls in or books in, we know their, they immediately know their address. So one of the things we're planning for the call centre is, is um, it'll front load the phone number. So when somebody who's been a client before puts their phone number in, we can immediately be able to tell yep. who they are and their address and everything. But you have to confirm it, of course. So Vicky's gone here, I've tried windows, then skips, then house cleaning, then oven cleaning, and still got the unservice message. So I don't know what, I think maybe Tasmania or something, I don't know what area you're in, Vicky, but it's a frustration. I don't believe us, it's a frustration on our end. It's, it's very frustrating. It's our, it's our, I mean, even though we, we, we're always concerned about people not turning up and not, quoting and stuff, most of our people who actually do get jobs do an extremely good service. And we know that from the surveys, which I look at every day. Mm. But 
the problem of unserviced leads is, is, is bad and it's getting worse. It's probably our number one downfall. That's true. And it's frustrating to hear your comment on like that, Vicky, because it's, you know, we want to help. We'd love to help be you, Well, we think Gyms Plus is going to help. The only thing is that at the moment, the standard of service for Gyms Plus is not as good. In fact, it's, um, I think Gyms Group Average is about a 4.6 star rating, which is pretty good, really. And the average for Gyms Plus last time is 4.23. And we do thank, that's true, and we do thank you for trying other services and most people yeah. don't, which is our frustration because they try it once and they never use gyms again, right? So, so there might be somebody who <laughs> you'd love to wash your dog or whatever it is and you don't, we don't get to hear from you. So. Yeah, because of that. But I think yeah. I think online they actually do have the, the, the available services. So no. in your area, at least in terms of the... Oh, uh, I don't know how, the, I don't think that displays it at the end. It says other services available. It doesn't say what else is available in your area. It does, doesn't it? No, it says list of other services. It's randomised. It doesn't take into account allocations and who's down for that work in there. I was sure they were supposed to be. Well, if it is the Let's, case, we'll, that's new we'll, to me. we'll check on that. But Vicky, thanks for that question. And as a customer, uh, we really appreciate yeah. the feedback. We do. In a we love the fact that you want to use us. It's great. Mm. And, and, and a lot of people like that. They do, some people will actually try again yeah. and again and again. They'll try booking in. They'll even say, I don't mind waiting a, four, a fortnight. I don't mind waiting a month. I just want gyms to do it, which is, which is really fantastic to hear. But, but what do you do? So Vicky won a voucher and she couldn't use it. So Vicky actually won a hush gym voucher, uh, one of the vouchers we did, yeah. and she was not able to use it. Which well, is we, we, Vicky, we'll, we'll reimburse you. If you, can't, if, you, if you generally can't use the service, we'll give you the money back. Yeah, we, we actually gave it to someone else. We actually, I did, she offered to give it to someone else for the fires, and we did fine and give it to someone else. Oh, okay. Well, so right, we did do good. it, so it was nice of her. But we do, but we do reimburse if people can't use them. Usually they can. Very, very true. And we had a question from Colin McCarthy. Hello from Ireland. I'll tell you what, if you can't get anything else, the gym's home fresh is great. Get some, some fruit. Not in Tassie, though. <laughs> Not in Tassie, right? <laughs> we yeah. can't. Well, it's a bit yeah. far to ship it across Bass Freight. Yeah, well, that's true. So, so Colin, Colin McCarthy's gone, hello from Ireland. First viewer from Ireland, I think. Oh, wow. So get out of Ireland, Colin. How many franchisees do you have and how many properties do you think Jim's mowing looks after altogether? Jim, it's hard to say. We've well, had I, that question before in terms of properties. Overall, we, we've got just under 4,000 franchisees, of which something like 1,800 and something mowing. are mowing. Yep. So if you assume the average mowing guy looks after 60 properties or like that, so on a regular basis, maybe yeah, 60, maybe, eight, maths, on maybe the spot. 80, well, I'm a calculator, anybody can use that. Mm. So if you, if you multiplied, um, say, it's about 1,850, say, but let's just say 75. 75, yeah. That's a reasonable it's about 138,750. Yeah. Well, yeah. exact doesn't mean anything, but that gives you an idea on a regular basis. But we also do a lot of uh, once-off jobs, of course. Yeah, and I think in the gym's job, in 2019, gym's done a total of 5 million jobs in total. That's, a, that's the figure Mike Davenport quotes in training. So that's mm. 5 million jobs in, in, in total. I think it's like 500,000 new leads or something, but 5 million jobs in total across the group, mm. which is what was quoted, well, that gets quoted in training. What total over over several years? No, no, five million jobs in a year. That we no no. That's what gets quoted. It's two thousand nine. That's the figure we've been quoting in training. But but quoted how? I don't know. That's the figure that gets quoted in training. No, no, we effort. we get about um, uh, four or five hundred thousand a year. Something new like leads. That. Is new, that new leads? Yeah, that's new leads. But in regards to the actual jobs that are done at people's property. Oh, yeah, if you count, yeah, if, correct. If, if you count that, obviously, because the point of it is. You know, you've got your you've got your mowing franchisees. That's the number of regular clients they have. Yes. But let's just say they mow them, uh, say, eighteen times a year. It doesn't take into account cleaning as well and all the regular service, dog wash, all these. No, no, ones. I'm just talking yeah. about mowing. See that that that's mowing, which is roughly half. So that's about so five. Two point five million nearly. So right. so five million would be probably be roughly correct. We probably we probably do about a five million jobs a year. Yes. Yeah. That's it. But thanks for tuning in, Colin from Ireland as well. That's um mm. very quite impressive. Mind you, it's a bit when when you talk about. The average too, it's a bit misleading. I mean, there's not a lot of franchisees, say in mowing, you'd have less than about 60 clients, but some have have many hundreds of clients. Because some of these guys have got multi-million dollar businesses with, with multiple trailers. I know one guy in New South Wales that turns, turns out a couple of million dollars a year. Yeah. And he's not, not probably not the top one. Yeah. Wow, that's great. That's so he would, uh, how many how many he would do with his teams, I have no idea. Oh, but you'd, there'd be a plenty. But quite a few of them have got multiple teams, so... Mm. That's a really good question, though. So we got one here from Willie. Willie is Willie came last week to training. I remember Willie who had the groundskeeper Willie shirts. shirts oh on. yeah, yeah. Great so he's got the question here: Canadians can Canadians pre-order Jim's Monopoly groundskeeper Willie? Yeah, you can. 
Sure. You can arrange. We'll have to do a custom invoice for you, though, Willie, because it's Canadian dollars or whatever. Plus, there'll be a postage, international postage. No, but actually, you, you, you can pay the equivalent Canadian dollars worth a dollar well, thirty Australian. That's no, true. It's, it's more. But there's a postage it, component we have. It's to more valuable. So you have, we have to yeah. charge you with a postage, but yeah. it probably would probably would be the discount. It'd probably be something like, yeah, yeah, we'd love you to have it. We've just been negotiating. I don't know if anybody has any opinion on this. But we've just been talking about how we're going to set it up. That what I like to see is is the the jimbo, which we're going to have as a counter as the actual, like equivalent to houses and hotels. So a green jimbo is equivalent of a house, yeah. And a red jimbo is the hotel. I think this one, be, this sort of thing behind, something us. like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that'd be visually that'd be good. Mm. Or whether we should use well, the other, the idea was to use trailers, trailers and vans. vans. So yeah. trailers is is it like your house and your vans are your, mm. so I don't know what's the best, but I, I like the I like the idea of having the little jimbo stack around like the board. I think it, well, I think I think it's it's not look it's going to be very uniquely Jim's and Jim's written the game himself, and we're not going to please everyone unfortunately with it, but we're going to please hopefully most. So it's going to be good. John Renders going here. I feel you need to distinguish the, between tire kickers and real customers to cut down on unserviced work. It's a good, that's John's a um, cleaning franchisee. How can you cut down on tire? How can we distinguish between tire kickers and real customers? How do you distinguish? <laughs> hey, like so many books of service. I'm sorry, no, I think you're a tire kicker. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> How can you tell? Um, yeah, I think that's the league fee discount supposed supposed to take that into account, isn't it? As well, in a way. Yeah, yeah. Well, online pricing. Our, our conversion rate is, is extraordinarily good. On average, we seem to convert about three quarters of all of our leads to jobs. Those are the ones that actually get get pushed out mm. so the great majority of people who actually cause are, are not tiger because they're genuinely and and uh, not not price sensitive either particularly which is interesting yeah did you want a customer who's really price sensitive that's another you know do yeah we don't really want we don't really want price sensitive customers that's one, one reason we'll never let a job go to more than one person mm. you know if a customer says we're too expensive well that's you know we're too expensive and that's we're not about being cheap we're about being good well the fact that you always quotes the speed of the return call right so the five, mm. that it's five less than five five minutes or less, right? They're well, the, the stats I always give in training is is and this is this is several years ago. We mm. actually checked on the conversion rate, um, and after two hours, there's a conversion rate under half, a bit under half. If they call back as reported by the client within the first two hours, but after the first ten minutes, it goes up to seventy eight percent. But if as reported by the client, they get back within ten minutes, eighty five percent conversion. Mm. So there's not a lot knocked back if you get back fast enough. That's, of course, if you can get the client, which is often the problem. That's true. It is a problem, but the lead fee discount's supposed to hopefully offset um, yeah, it does. anything of that. So Yeah, yeah. We, we, we wouldn't want everybody, if, if, if I were a franchisee that was converting, you know, more than 85%, I'd say you're too cheap. It, mm. It's absurd. One of my franchisees, Anthony Silverman, when he was a, he was a franchisor now, um, he actually was proud of the fact that he was converting in the 90s. 90% plus, and he was hearing me talking about the fact that you should be converting 75%, which is what we tend to say, and um, he, uh, he, he put his prices up, and he, he got his conversion rate down to about in the high 80s, and, and then he thought, that's not good enough, if Jim hears about this, he's going to have it for me, so he put them up again, never mm. actually got down to 75%, but he made so much money, he eventually bought the region. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> he's done very well over the years, Mr. Yeah. Silverman. It's surprising, yeah. actually, it's, it's, it's a very striking thing. Whether it's the customers in general, or more particularly because of our brand, um, people are extraordinarily price insensitive to price. Yeah, I think they get the job done right, and to what people, they stand. People will, dis- people will save five percent on their on their two percent to buy something at the supermarket cheaper or whatever, but they'll but they'll gladly pay an extra ten percent, even twenty percent, to get gyms to do it. Mm. And it's this thing that people like fencing. We are not the cheapest by a long shot. We make sure to charge more. But people will, will still queue up. They'll say, I don't mind. I'll, I'll, they'll ring again and again and again to try and get Jim's fencing. It's all the other things. The quality, the back-end support is something Well, particularly wrong. with a fence because it's the sort of thing, you know. You need a if, guarantee. If, if, right? if your fence yeah. falls down after two years, you can whistle if you find it independent. But if it's us, it's covered. And we, we do replace fences. There we go. So John Renner's mowing franchisee. Sorry, John. Uh, thanks for that question. And, uh, thanks for that comment, John. That's really, really good. So make sure if you're a franchisee, he's all up watching. But John, you should comment. be losing quotes. Don't don't talk about tie kickers so much. It's just people that they want the cheapest price and they're mistaken enough to ring us. And, and you don't need them. And, and I don't care. No matter how much you charge, it's not a complaint. Mm. In fact, if I there's any indica- I had a complaint today, which was which was a complaint about. Um, uh, it was supposed to be quality of work, but when the franchise all rang the customer, it was quite clear that they were just having a go at us, and it was really they were just angry about it being too dear. 
Mm. Well, it might have been double what someone else was charging, but that's not valid. So I, I deleted the complaint and deleted the poor survey. Well, Cole McCarthy's gone for the next question or comment. Try and be short with this one, Jim, because it's very generic. He's gone, how did you start off? What's the history? I would say download this book, Colm, for free. Yeah. From, um, it's also a talking book. It is a talking book. So the audio. I, I started yeah. off doing it as a student job. That's, that's, that's the it. simple answer. And, and with no idea it would be anything more than that. Jim's.net audio book. You can get that under Meet Jim or Who is Jim, I think we've called it. You can get that for free. That has it all in there and the secrets. So Eric Jurgens has gone in. Can we look? Oh, sorry there. Just going to get back on here real quick. Eric Jurgens, can we look at sending the contact details for an unserviced lead to the local franchisee? as it would be better for the group if they were at least no, contacted Eric, by a franchisee. Eric, Eric, we thought about that All years right. ago. Right. We do it. There's a yeah. little there's a little tick box in, in Jim's online, or you can do it through the franchise or the call centre. You just do a tick, and any unserviced lead from your division in your region gets sent to you. What it what it comes through is it's it's got the, the street and the, the service and the suburb, obviously, but not the contact details and not the actual address. Mm. So what you do is when you get this, as soon as you get it, you get on the phone, you ring the call centre and say, I want this job, bang, it's assigned to you, you get tell the details and you ring the client. So Rick's just gone here, just to the last bit, he's gone, I got a notification of an unserviced lead while I was on a cruise this week and managed to get it sent through and got the job, but it could have been too late. So he's on a cruise, good to see you on a cruise watching as well. So that's, he's not going too bad, that's good. But um, yeah, so you hopefully Jim's answered that question for Eric. If yeah. it's not, please put another we'll question there. It, it all came out of a conversation I, I talk about in training with the franchisee yeah. who, who didn't realise there was work just over the boundary. And well, I was able to help him by changing his areas, basically. But at the same time, I recognised that I knew about the unserviced leads, but he didn't. So we set this up. Mm. So here we go. Muka Kennedy. Hello, Jim. Any advice on becoming successful and setting goals as a young person? <laughs> Very generic one. Read hey, the listen. Book. Read the book. There, there's no <laughs> difference. It doesn't matter whether you're an old, you're an old, has been like myself, or you're a young Turk just starting out. <laughs> Very simple. Focus on service. Look after the people you're dealing with, and that includes any people who work for you, as well as, um, and in our case, obviously franchises, as well as clients. And just look to improve what you do all the time. It doesn't matter where you start from. It's it's the journey that matters. Mm. That, that applies at any age. There's no difference between being young and old. The world is bursting with opportunity right now. I tell you what, there's never been a better time to go into business. The opportunities are extraordinary. A toilet paper delivery. There you go. Toilet paper delivery. You might think of fun. a new division. Somebody, somebody tonight might actually take something up with this and become a multi-millionaire. Who knows? You never know. So you ran us going, after Jim's Monopoly's release, you should do a Mr. Jimbo like Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> Mr. Jimbo, like a Mr. You know those Mr. Potato Heads, and you stick things on them and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You've ever seen it, Mr. Potato Head? We can do. You can do the hat, the beard. You can take it off. It's a toy. You ever seen Mr. Potato Head? Oh, I've heard of it. No. I'll show it to you after this. Now, Jody McKenzie, I inquired a few days ago about a Jim's Dog Wash franchise and received an SMS, but I'm yet to hear from anyone. Ouch. And, and I got a text too from for Ash Cleary. Goes, I got a text. Hey, listen. Dog wash. Email Jim at Jim's dot net, and I'll tear strips off whoever failed to respond to you because we don't. Take it's not that. commonplace, and we apologise. No, but definitely, no, Joe. Not at all. Jim I'm at Jim's very Jim's concerned. Net. I mean, sometimes people are hard to get onto. You know, and we have a we have a policy in Jim's. If you can't get onto somebody, you ring them and then you text them, and then you try and email them. If, yeah. you, if you try all that and they don't get through, well, we won't blame you. But but sometimes people are a bit hard to reach. And here we go, Glenn Carmichael, hi guys, Jim's group has awesome buying power and for the franchisees, which is great, but how do we in NZ get the same sort of deals like phones, vehicles, etc. regards, Glenn? Yeah, well, we'd certainly like to do more for you. We took, we tried to get... Um, Does it, isn't there an advisory or something? Is there like a panel in New Zealand, right? There's an advisory. Yeah, we, we, try, to get, we try to get the best deals, but most of you people approach us, actually. It's not so much us going to them, they just come to us and say, we want to sell to your guys. Do we have an NZ preferred suppliers list? Because I'm not too sure on that. I know we have an Oz one, obviously, but... I don't think so, apart from insurance, of course. I guess it's a good idea, Glenn. It's um, a good just idea. needs someone to drive it and put it together. But we would certainly respond. But it, 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 we don't really go looking for it. People just ask us. Mostly what they, what they want to come to is, say, how do we get into your buying group? How do we get your guys to buy, you know? And we say, well, that's easy. You say, do you have to, yeah. do you want to buy an ad? Can we buy an ad? No, or yeah. how do we do it? Or pay to be in your mailing list? No, no, you can't. Just give us the best deal. And we'll, they'll put them right full. But Glenn, I think it's something that I know as NZ Group, you could probably drive if a couple of people get together and want to do some group deals. I guess it'd be great. I don't know how much national we could do in NZ, but I don't know. Well, we'd like to. We don't have any. We don't have any any people doing it specifically. But if we could get some deals, we'd love to. I mean, uh, we, we should. Abundance in New Zealand. They are, I think. Yes, they are. 
We should be asked them to go across. Well, I think when we get approached for deals now, Jim, we can mention if they've got an NZ, you do the NZ deal the same yeah, way. Yeah, usually separate organisations. Yeah, we should do that. We'll, 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 we'll try and do something. But I know you. there's an advisory, I think, in NZ, isn't there? There is advisory. No. Well, they've there's got an advisory, advisory member in New, in, in New Zealand. Right. But but not a, not a they haven't got a, a committee as such. Okay. But they haven't in Australia either. It's, it's but it, the answer is it should happen. And then uh, we should probably start when we get promotions to deals always as a stock standard answer. What about NZ? Same yeah, thing. We should. Okay, so Jim. worth doing actually. I reckon we should approach our whole entire suppliers list and just ask them. Do you have NZ opportunities? Can, can you do something for NZ? Like, well, we should like, have um, a list, yeah, but we don't have a preferred supplier stock. I'm pretty certain for NZ. All right, well, we've we'll written that one down, Glenn. That's really good. That's, mm. um, that's an awesome one. So, franchisees, franchisors, please leave comments and questions. As you can see, we'll do something about it. Um, okay, so Chris James has gone, how live is this really, question mark? How live is Jim's live? I don't know how to prove that it's live, but <laughs> well, put a question, swearing. Put a question through and, and have it answered on the spot. <laughs> well, there we go. It Bes is live. It is yeah. live. I don't know. He doesn't, like, he doesn't like to tell me anything in advance. He I don't. He doesn't, no. he doesn't tell me the questions. No. He, he, just, he, just, he just... Well, if you watch previous ones, you'll definitely see some of the answers that have come up on the shows. And well, sometimes I think it's some pretty crappy answers. And I, think <laughs> got, I should have thought about that one a bit better, but still. It's true. It's, it's unscripted and live. I don't, yeah, I don't know how much more we can um, say it's live, but it is live. There we go. <laughs> so we've got one from John Render. It's the Sat Night keyboard puncher and wonders how much. So he's saying it's the keyboard warrior on a Saturday night and just wonders how much and then sends a lead through or a request through. So. Yeah, it's true sometimes. But then again, we do get an astonishingly high conversion rate. It, it, it startles me, actually. You would think that when we're the definitely the higher charging... In the service industry, we charge more than any of our competitors and yet we still have this extraordinarily high conversion rate, which mm. is really odd when you think about it. I, I mean, I would, I would have thought, you know, losing half your, getting half your leads would be pretty good, but we get more like three quarters. And it's, but it is a common, it is a common frustration of other franchisees, John, so you're definitely not alone. Everyone's tie kickers and pricing and all that sort of yeah. stuff. So. But also your definition of a tie kicker, how expensive are you? In the, in the, what, you also get this little one, two, three dollar signs, which, yep. which tells you, price rating, yeah. gives you an idea of price. So one dollar signs means you're in the bottom third in terms of being knocked back from surveys two is in the middle, three in your top one. Um, and sometimes people object to being, having three dollar signs because they said the price was reasonable. Why did they say no? And they said, well, having three dollar signs isn't, isn't a bad thing. Mm. I was talking to a franchisee the other day who was very busy. I noticed he only had one dollar sign. I said, you're not charging enough. You should get more knockbacks. You should, you should, you should have more tie kickers. Mm, that's people who will not pay your pit because you're not Because there's so much work around. What's the point? What's the point of knocking back 170,000 customers a year why not put your prices up and knock back a few less, but have people reject us on price? Very, very true. So Shane, because my franchise is going to make more money. There we go. So Shane Shamax gone. What's your hourly rate? Good one to clear up. We don't set hourly rates because no. we're a franchise, so they're local independent. No. they local we, businesses. We, who do we their recommend thing. our franchisees work towards at least sixty bucks an hour. If now that doesn't happen necessarily in the first. No, mind. I was talking about one franchise who just started last month and is making three thousand dollars a week. <laughs> oh, jeez. But that's unusual. Jeez, it really is unusual. Well, unusual. But well. generally speaking, most franchisees, I would think, would figure on at least sixty bucks an hour while they're working, which isn't. When you think about business it, costs, all that sort of stuff. Well, when you've got business costs and stuff, you're, you're working for yourself. You, it doesn't include superannuation. But just for example, if you're if you're mowing somebody's lawn, which of course I'm familiar with. A, a, a typical mow edge, remove grass from the front and back yard, it's about 35 minutes. Mm. And these days you charge usually about 50 bucks or there, mm. a bit more in Sydney. So it's kind of, if you figure it out and, and put a bit of travelling in, that's, that comes out to about, about that. Yeah. But it's not really, one of the things, if somebody comes to us with a, with a new business idea, the first thing we, we want to know is what's the potential earning. And if they can't see the average person making at least 60 bucks an hour, it's not worth doing. Having said that, the top guys will make two, three hundred dollars an hour. But There we go. So another, another one from Tim Taylor. Hey, Jim, I have a disability and I do gardening at Disability Company. Can people with disabilities work for Jim's mowing? So we don't employ anyone, but franchisees can employ yeah, people if they want. And I'm well, sure they would. Well, that's what disability is, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I'm sure they would as well if there's, if there's options for that sort of stuff. For but there's, but there's, there's, there's all kinds of options, even within certain divisions. Like, for example, I had a guy who was in um, mowing. He's an older bloke. He's like in the early 60s and stuff. But he was finding it was too difficult physically and also because he'd get vibration problem from the, yep. from the mowers. Um, so what I actually got him to do was to shift into Jim's gutter clearing, mm -hmm. 
which is which is far better paid and doesn't have the same physical demands as as pushing a lawnmower around does. Well, Tim, I would say as well, the franchise owners they're in their own businesses, so if they are able to employ with you know government, yeah, uh, that's right. The, the, if things in place, the hardest sure thing to would. find is not so much the muscle to push the the mower or the mop, or whatever. It's the business mind behind it. Um, and, and because of the way our system works, particularly in divisions where there's an enormous amount of unserviced leads, um, fencing probably the classic example, it's very easy for, to have somebody who's a business manager who goes out and, and manages the job, goes and quotes, puts teams of workers on and looks after them. And in fact, a lot of our franchisees don't actually do any of the physical work at all. Yeah. Quite, quite a few of the top guys just, just act as managers. True. Very true. So got another question here from that's a great question Tim. plus plus also when you're successful at that you're going to become a franchise or and then you become a, a full-time manager that's it full-time business coach yeah all, all that sort of stuff so cody gero has gone this is a generic question a good one to ask it as always would you think you would be as big as you are um now 20 years ago i would say again check out the book <laughs> if you watch never, this never, the never, never, never. Yeah. it always surprised me in, in my, one of the things I say about business is something nothing ever works out the way you expect. People do these elaborate plans for the future, garbage. Most things you try don't work out very well at all, and some things you try work out vastly better than you could possibly imagine. Mm. And Jim's is one, be one of those. It just floors me completely. I, I cannot comprehend how I've got nearly 4,000 franchisees. So Malcolm Bradley's gone here with the question is from Test and Tag NZ. NZ had a general manager and was getting some national deals for supplies but now he's gone there is no one well i think it's something that we can do yeah from our side well like i said even in australia there's never been anybody who actually went out and and and, and searched for them yeah but we could we should ask we will well i think we just put it as part of the process now so when they ask us about getting at the gyms group we say do you have new zealand well, we're fine supplies list we've got we've got all the car um we've got oh, there's car. heaps of cars deals flying car companies online sort of stuff they, they love us you get just get fleet discount yes correct and so if you if you want to buy almost any vehicle you get the same price as if you were, if you had twelve vehicles already. That, yeah. That's the basic deal we offer. Yeah, that's very very true. And Don McInnes is going. People will pay for quality workmanship, so yeah. service. And then what's the other one? The other one is test and tag achieves a good hourly rate. So test and tag franchise. Yeah, test and tag is one of the top earners actually. I think they make most of them make a lot more than sixty bucks an hour. Because yeah. I know I know an established test and tag business goes for six cool. figures. They're very very valuable because they're so lucrative. Now, in, in full disclosure, we always ask any question on our stream, so we're going to do one now. Chris James has been commenting a bit, and it's no no problem asking this, Chris. So, hi, just wondering if I can ask a question about Jim's batteries, please. Inquiring about the franchisors in Victoria. So he's asked it multiple times. So that's the question that's come through. Well, the division hasn't worked particularly well. We find it very hard to find the, the work we want to. Mm. So what we're actually doing, for the most part, is we're, we're working out other divisions for the gym factories guys to go to. Yeah, I know, and a few of them taken up on the offer as well. Yeah, I, I, think, I think most of them are. Test and tag and some other ones. Yeah, we've had a couple. Test and tag is great, and it's mm. kind of comparable, but it's, it's, it's hard to know. It's just one of those divisions that really sounded great, but... It's, it's in practice, it's very difficult to, to find enough work to keep them busy. So, but we don't we don't let any franchisee go. Actually, we had an entire division which was um, interior design yes. that uh, that went gurgle up. It just didn't work. I mean, it looked it sounded great, had it seemed to have a good business model. But in practice, we had four franchisees, none of them were making money. So, and it wasn't they were obviously good people there. So we we got the more cleaning franchises. We just transitioned them across, no cost. Mm. And uh, one of them is now one of the hugely successful franchise all. Yeah, it's a good it's a good question. And full disclosure, um, mm. you not know. not everything we do works out. And I think that's something people have got to recognise. Having the gym's brand doesn't guarantee it's going to work for a new division. Some some divisions, like say our building inspections, which is only about eight years old, yep. and we're already the biggest in the country, mm. and that's been fantastic. Well, Dogwash is now the biggest in the country as well. Dog dog really should quickly. Be, dog wash should be the biggest. That's been going for a long time now. Yep. But you know, you you do things like that, and you don't necessarily or test and tag itself. Yes. You yeah, know, when somebody is. came to me about test and tag, they had a business that was in Albury Wodonga. And they were busy just in Albury with Donker, and I thought, jeepers, you could have hundreds if, if that was the idea. But I didn't even knew it existed, and, and we just gave it a try, and it worked fantastically mm. well. And we've now got 180 of them and, and growing fast. But other things like batteries or um, interior design, there's other ones that just haven't worked. And, and all, all I can say is that business is, a, is not a guarantee, even, even with us. If you go into a new division, we don't know how well it's going to go exactly. We, we think it's a good deal, and most of them do work out. 
but sometimes they just don't. Mm. So uh, thanks for that question, Chris. And uh, he says it's very you. sad. I find that quite. It, what actually happens, I, I must say, just to put it in perspective, there are costs involved, but we normally um, wear them ourselves. Mm. So we will pay. We tend to pay the training costs or whatever to get into the other division. Oh yeah, there's definitely not just let, leave them alone. It's definitely yeah. find multiple solutions. Possibly. That happens also within within certain divisions. Like like we've had a couple of people from carpet cleaning in some areas had a lot of trouble finding enough work, so we transition them into, into general cleaning. They can still do the carpet cleaning, yeah, but the they service. get the yeah. they get the regular cleaning as well. They get the benefits of the, all these actual other services from that one. So, so because we've got so many divisions, there's always some, something for somebody to do. So we just say, what's your offer? And we tend to look at divisions that have got lots of work, like, like fencing or handyman or mm. cleaning or one of those. There we go. So let's keep going some questions here. Some good ones coming through now, which are really poignant for the group. Sharon Connell, oh, one of our favourites, favorite, tuning in every week. Hi, Jim and Joel. Jim, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how being tough on complaints helps our franchisees. Question mark. Yes. Very good question. Well, <laughs> it's very hard. You know, I had a franchisee today. He was he was complaining about his three star survey. He thought it was unfair and stuff. He's a great guy. He's like four point eight stars. Fantastic operator. But he got his complaint. They said the graphs were too short or something like that. And he was really said, Jim, you got no empathy. And I said, Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's true in a sense. But if I did what people want, which is basically to simply delete every complaint or bad survey a franchisee objects to, and I do get this kind of thing quite often. That would be very empathetic, but then what would happen is our reputation would sink and the number of leads would go down and it would probably start dropping fairly fast as the word gets around and as the poorest operators go rampant and just trash everything, the ones that they're held in check now mm. just go out and they do terrible, terrible business and the leads start going down and, and then you've got you know, hundreds of franchisees making less money and some of them are going broke or losing their business, maybe even losing their houses and stuff and I say, well, you know, would you have empathy for them? And, and I'd say, yes, I would. And in a sense, I have to balance a, a possibly unfair complaint. Some of them are unfair, but I, there's no evidence that it's unfair against a person losing their, their house because they can't afford to keep going in business because the leads have dropped off. Which is your highest priority? Which, which, where do we need to put in most of our effort into? Mm. And, I, and I think we've got a responsibility to franchisees to make sure that the great majority, including this, particularly this guy, is a fantastic operator. 4.8 stars is, is, is brilliant. I'd, I'd employ him to do anything for me. And I do feel for that. I do feel that he's got a complaint that he hasn't had one in the last year. Yeah. It's the first one he's had for so long. I do feel for that. But at the same time, you know, I talk to franchisees who fail. And, and I tell you what, that is the most painful conversation you can possibly have. Mm. Somebody who's not, like some of these batteries guys, it's very hard to take. And, and, and I feel like a failure, and I, and I feel what I do wrong. And, and I actually spend sort of probably at least a couple of hours a day dealing with complaints. What's well, the most contentious issue when Jim's isn't the complaints? I do. I, I personally do with it because it's so important. And, yeah. which, which, and as those of you know who've been tuning in, we've changed the system now. So we're actually, I'm actually deleting any complaint where the client is eventually satisfied. Even if they're late, it doesn't matter, yeah. didn't quote anything else. As long as you get in touch with the client, satisfy them, give them a freebie, do it again, whatever, you, any way you can satisfy the client will delete the complaint. Which is so a big we, change. That's which a, is a very big change just taking place, and I've just started to implement it this week. And what about the wording, the wording of possible? Has that been done, or what's yeah, going no, that's on? A, it's so it's a, now it's possible a, concern, or what's the actual word? It's a possible here? complaint. So The wording actually, complaint still So it doesn't count as a complaint, until it's got at least two days of combine. Okay. It doesn't count for statistics, it doesn't count for anything at all until the franchise has got a chance to Which is a big, um, big change as well. And I, and I would delete probably at least 15, 20 complaints a day. Mm. Um, it's, it's, it's very common. Most people who ask me, I do delete them because there's a, there's a valid reason. Sometimes the franchise who has to ring the franchisee to check. Yeah. Um, sometimes they show me the text they sent. Well, it causes lots of issues for Zors as well because the Zors takes generally the first point of call, so we... Yeah. Um, yeah. We're also looking forward to Jim's jobs being ready because that'll actually contain a whole lot of, when it's programmed, eventually it'll contain a whole lot of information that will help us to understand. So, for example, one of the most common forms of complaint, quality complaints is Jim's, is the job we didn't get. Yeah. They ring up and they say, you give me trashy, awful service. And the are but it wasn't me. <laughs> I didn't do the job. They said it was too dear. So they blame. So yeah. once we check that out and we find out they didn't, of course we delete it. But, but mm. that kind of thing will become very easy when we know whether you got the job or not. Yeah, that's very true. But it's a great question, Sharon. And it uh, is a concern. I, I, look, I, honestly speaking, 
it's not an easy thing to get right because we do know there are franchisees who've gone independent because they don't like the complaints in the surveys. They, yes. and, and that's the problem. But you've got to balance a person going independent, that many people going independent against the other option, which is that many people losing their business and mm. their livelihood. I mean, I mean, at least if you go independent, you're still in business. Mm. But if you lose your business and you go broke because there's not enough leads coming through, and this is quite real, um, it does happen. I, I speak to people. It's, it's really hard to take. It's, to me, it's the worst failure. I don't like losing a franchisee who goes independent because, whatever, he doesn't need us or because of the complaints or whatever. I don't like that, but at least they're still in business. Mm. They've got value from us. They've invested in the business. They've got a business. Independent, gyms, whatever. In fact, I take great pride in people who are hugely successful who started with us and are no longer with us. Uh, to me, that's an achievement for us. But somebody who loses their business because they can't make enough money, that is really hard to take. And that's the thing I, I most hate. Well, I want to keep moving on here. Thanks for that question, Sharon. So we've got a multiple questions from, a, I think it's a husband and wife couple about who've been dealing for franchises on the Gold Coast. So they're doing the due diligence right now, watching, which is great. Good, good. So it's from Thais and Gustavo Silva. So I'd say from your last names, you are Brazilian. Let me know if I'm right. So they've been in touch with Leanne from the Gold Coast and Sunshine Coast. But now their, their opinion, they want your opinion on the pros and cons in between Jim's handyman and Jim's fencing in relation to a business opportunity. He is a, I think he's a carpenter by trade. So he's trying to figure out what's the best opportunity for him as a carpenter by trade up on the Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast area, handyman or a fencing. Well, you need to be a handyman of some kind to be a Jim's handyman because you need to do wide experience. Well, he's a carpenter by trade, so it's perfect for that. So fencing, you don't need it. It'll be a benefit because it'll be easy for you, but you, you get trained from scratch. Look, I have to say fencing every time. Because the, the thing is, fencing is the worst division in Jim's group. From one particular point of view, it's got the highest unserviced ratio. It's like 60%. I've never, ever known any franchisee ever in fencing to be short of work. I'll make the other argument, though, for the franchise all side with Handyman, just to be just to be play the devil's advocate. I would say, Gustav, as a carpenter, you can obviously do multiple more interesting, I would say, maybe jobs with decks, pergolas, full rent of kitchen Look, renovations. I, I, can't argue, I can't argue yeah. it would be more interesting. I think, I think probably the best point is what do you, what do you like? What do you like to do, yeah. But fencing is great because, okay, I'm, again, I'm pushing the point. If, if Leaving aside whether you want to do it, if you prefer to do multiple different kinds of jobs, then do handyman. Yeah. Absolutely, totally right. Um, fencing has the advantage that there's lots and lots of work. Um, it tends to be very well paid. It's a job that's easy to get a good price for for labour because of the fact that people are scared of it falling over. So it's true. So you can you can very well you can be charging double the labour rate of another company and you can still get it because the gym's name is so powerful for it. They want that guarantee. Yeah. It's also a very good one for employing people too because the job is so large and, and what typically happens too you'll do a you'll do a a, a fence round a, a property but then all those three neighbours back and sides. Have all got one good fence, beautiful fence, and, and two trashy fences. So you're often moved down the street. So unlike things like mowing and cleaning and handyman and those, you often tend to get a lot of work in the same place. Mm. And that's so it's kind of like you can you can be a fencing contractor, know what you're doing, learn what you're doing, employ so get a team in place, and then you can just you can watch your teams. I would say do a trial day with both as well. Yeah, I'd so say you can do a trial day. But what do you enjoy the best? As Jim was saying before, is probably the way to go. You're going to do well regardless of which one you go and. Regard. People often ask me which is the best franchise, and I yeah. say always say, "What do you like doing?" Yeah, so if you like doing that, I'd just say get started. Do a trial day for both, and actually talk to the franchisees in both divisions mm. is the best part of it as well. I can actually tell you, you know, which divisions tend to make the most money too, and, and some of them are known for it, and some of them are known for not. They're, they're, they're actually, the ones that tend to be the most lucrative, generally speaking, are a little bit more uncertain, like skip bins and, and tennis, because they rely on on the work, and if the work goes down, you can be in a lot of trouble, or if there's a lot of compet compet competitive, like in there's, skip bins. There's so pros and cons with every division. Though, there is in every division, so the high earners tend to be a bit more chancy, whereas the ones with the regular work, like the mowing and the cleaning, tend to be more steady. Yeah, and that's up to you how big you build the business. As Jim said, you can build yeah. the business quite big in whatever you want, but whatever you like is <coughs> probably the, the way to go. But trial day, do I trial think, days. I think any business in gyms could make you a millionaire if you run it well enough. It's not, yeah. there's, no, there's, no, there's no business that's got any sort of limit on, on success. But thanks for leaving those comments and questions and um, trial day and keep talking to the people as well. That's the best yeah. way to go. Definitely, yeah. definitely go out on the, on the trial day. Go out yeah. on, the, on, the, on the job and, and find out what it is. Definitely. So <laughs> Some people have actually started work and they tell they don't like the work, which is a really bad idea. But it's good for them because they don't waste any, any money or heartache. Yeah. Just no, no, I've had people actually start 
doing the job by franchise, but they haven't figured it out in advance, they don't want to do it. Yeah. Not, not very often. Mm. Not very there we often. go. So, Cherry Bennett Scani, what are some problems Jim's facing? What problems we're we facing? Yes, yeah, what are some problems Jim's facing? That's the question. I'm going to franchise these. I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's by far our number one yeah. problem. We just don't have enough people. We, 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 the demand for our services keeps on rising and, and we can't cope with it, which is a ter terrible customer service issue too. Mm. And, and we've got, well, it's a great deal. For heaven's sake, you've got work coming out our ears. Yeah. And, and we know that our success rate is so high. We've actually lowered the price on a lot of franchises just because we're so, there's so much work. It's so easy to find work and it's so, um, I don't know, actually. I, well, don't, I, think, I, think the I don't comprehend it, actually. No. You get people who go and do these extensive, they'll spend years and years at university and they get some crappy job where they pay almost nothing. And, 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 you know, you could be in your own business and you could be making there's millions down the track of it. I think the misconception around the service industry is the there, big There one. is a problem with people that work with your hands, mm. okay? People are snobby. One of the most... <laughs> <laughs> they really are. Come on. It's, it's, yeah. Look at you. Look, look at your hands. Come on. They're not that bad. There's some blisters on from deadlifting. Lifting some weight. They're oh, ripped. Weightlifting. Come They're on. Ripped. What a ponzi thing to do. I mean, that's not real work. <laughs> oh, weightlifting. On. Come on. I'm carrying all the staff at the National Office on my back gym all the time. That's what I'm getting my work out in. Don't worry about that. So, <laughs> I think there's a ridiculous prejudice against manual work these days, and I reckon one of the greatest things is I, you know, I did when I was a student. I just love being outside, and I love working with my hands, and I love gardens, and and it was it was it was unbelievably good as a career option. Mm. And I'm so lucky I didn't become an academic, which is what I wanted, because this is so much more fun. I think you've done a bit better. <laughs> I've done a bit better than the average yeah, academic. Yeah. And, it's, it's, and, and I'm funding all the research too. I'm That's putting true. a million bucks a year into my research project, which is about mental illness and stuff. So and all the science that I want, to, I can do, I can pay for it. There we go. So I keep going here, Jim, because we've got some good questions from franchisees coming up, which we want to I get to real quickly. Long. No, no, not at all, not at all. Eric Jergens has gone, hi, guys. I'm back from the cruise spectrum of the seas. Gave volunteer first responders. I, you did, I, I didn't get coronavirus on that one. <laughs> we ain't going to either. Uh, as, but as a first responder, he got a free four-night cruise with everything included. That's not bad. They denounced the third cruise departing on Sydney. Registration for the cruise is 10 a.m. So get on board to volunteer because there's a cruise involved. So Volunteer for what? If you're, a volunteer for, if you're a part of the volunteer first responders, so if you're part of the first responders, you get free cruise. Not bad. Wonderful. That's, that's good. So we'll keep going down here. Glenn Sharp. Hi, guys. I had an incident on the weekend where I smashed a rear window on a car from a whipper snipper. If it was below the excess, would you pay the person cash or still go through insurance? Well, no point in going for insurance if it's below the excess. Yeah, that's, that's just, true. Just pay them, pay them properly. It's, it's hard. I used to have a regular plumber on stack and a glazier when I was mowing lawns. <laughs> I, I did a few. I used to always hit the, uh, you know, those, the water meters in, yep. in the yard? Yes. And when the grass gets long, it's going bang. Oh, not again. And then I had to call up my regular plumber. There we go. So Vicky Sherman's gone, will you make Jim's bobbleheads to buy? We've had that question a few times. Um, we get asked for products, but sometimes they don't do as well. The bears go okay and stuff. So I don't know if you want to do a Jim's bobblehead. Right. Have you wobbling on the car with that? <laughs> no, I don't mind. I might get one. We can do one. We can do a I couple. Think it's good. Yeah, because we have those things in the office now, don't we? You have your, your little things, which people went nuts over online when you wrecked the box. It's got around six thousand views that video on TikTok of you wreck, opening that box. If I remember the power really, oh, this is they went nuts. Here. People who were in right into those things went nuts at you opening the box. I think it's good. It's on my desk. They are. They hated you taking out of the box though. They went berserk about it. Why? They lost it. There's people who collect those things, and it's all about the pristine condition of the box, etc. And I just you a massive. I, I want to enjoy having the Emperor Palpatine on my desk. I don't want him in a box. Plus, you can afford a couple more if you needed to as well. So that's the. They went off. They went off on it. But that was good for views. So Jason Travers, this is a good one from a franchisee. Jason Travers is gone. How can we stop getting a poor star rating for quoting a job only? It can be. It can only be removed if they leave a comment without saying that it was too expensive. And then Eric's gone. Oh, yeah. Jason's got a great point. I got a one star rating, and even though I went back. And offered to come at a different time. He said he was happy, but won't redo his rating when I said. No, it's actually, what you've got to do is to get the franchise order ring, and, and the client, which is something difficult so to the get. The franchise order ring the client. Yeah, okay, I mean, that's what they do. Yeah, that's what I always say. If, if you've got any problem, ring up and just ask what the issue was. And and usually, if it's priced, I'll will tell you. The, the hardest thing is getting on to them. But sometimes it's kind of we. I had one today where the where the the friend that this person was was he actually put down. Late call, late turn up, never got a quote. So this is an email quote. So three different complaints. And then he said he, he charged an exorbitant price. And he gave it one star. Well, 
<laughs> Let me tell you, if you charge an exorbitant price, you must have done a quote. <laughs> so what happened is this right. guy got obviously extremely irate and angry about the price. Yep. He was being charged like double what anybody else did. So yep. um, he got, so I, but I deleted that because obviously the guy was lying. Sure. So you, you, if it, you're right. If, it, if it's, you, you've got to get your franchisee just to contact them. So the answer for Jason is the franchisor. Franchisor. And I will always take the franchisor's word. Okay. The, the difficulty is when the franchise or the franchise is the same one. But, but no, I don't think Jason's a franchise or, so I would no, say, Jason, no. contact your franchise Get your franchise or to work harder for you. Pay him a fee, so get him to do some work for you and ring up the client, and I will gladly take it off. All he has to say is, this is a price indication. Yeah. If we see okay. anything at all that indicates the issue with price, we will definitely take it off. So that's a really good comment, Jason, yeah, and is. thanks for that. So please uh, email or call your franchise or, and I can do that. And thanks to Eric with the comment. Vicky's going here, maybe start as a Jim's fencing franchisee, very successful, then open another doing handyman. That's a suggestion from Vicky, but you wouldn't need to do that, would you, if cross well, the original? Well, not really, because, because you don't have, you're not actually restricted. This thing, if, you're a, if you're a carpenter and you go to somebody's place to do their fence, you can always just say, well, look, if you, while I'm here, have you got any handyman work to be done? Hmm. Um, mind you, you can also work, do their lawns or anything else you want to do too. There's no, there's no restriction on what you can do apart from um, the fact that you've got to be insured for it. But if you're building a fence, you're probably going to be covered for something like a handyman type job because it's all, you know, carpentry things. Yeah, it's a good one, Vicky. Yeah. Then Don McKinnis is yeah, gone. Very, very rarely would any franchisee have more than one franchise. It's, it, it's almost unheard of because the fact is the matter, if you've got one franchise, you can do pretty well anything. Yeah, you don't need to have qualify the, yeah, for. Yeah, yeah, you don't. True. You don't need yeah. it. And and it's it's you don't you don't need to, because of the way our system works. You don't even you even need to have. Doesn't even give you a lot more work necessarily. Well, that's a good point. We've had people, and I remember in Mali and some other ones, they bought two territories. Yeah, they do. So, but there's no real need to, is there? I don't know why they do that yeah. actually. And, unless and I know there's one franchise or in franchise Z in Queensland who's got two territories because they're in different regions. That 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 can be a reason. Yeah, that makes because, sense. Because you get you get priority for work in your yes. own region, but but in other regions you 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 know. They've got some business set up, I think, where they've got contractors, maybe, or something. I don't know what they're doing, but yeah. that does make sense. Look, if you had enough, if you're making enough money, like if you're making, you know, a couple of million dollars a year, paying an extra 700 bucks per month for a second franchise might not mean very much to you. The top franchisees actually would pay less than 1% of their turnover. Yeah, well, we're going to do a video of that actually coming up tomorrow, hopefully, about some of the comments. And I want to say a big thank you to franchisees because what's been happening is we have franchise inquiry ads going at the moment and franchisees are jumping on in the comments which i'm going to show you some saying how great jim's is i've been here for 13 years and oh, it's great. not a because there's so much misinformation saying why well, mate jim richie touches it and they're going well, hang on it actually works out like this this and this so we've got franchisees and i thank all those guys who've been jumping on giving testimonials online in the comments mm -hmm. regarding the system and it's been quite interesting funny to see the people shut up who these keyboard warriors before the misinformation yes that's if you, if you want to do a comparison so, have a look at something like um high pages look at their comments yeah, there about oh. what the contract was selling that one. Oh, they hate it like poison. The best example though has been a bloke called Flaggy. He's a forum, you know, on the forum, there's a guy called Flaggy. He's always yeah. poking and all that sort of stuff. But yeah. he he actually went on there and wrote a massive spiel about how happy he is and stuff like that. And that's and nice. Okay. It was um, quite refreshing. Actually, some really of the good. some of the loud wheels are very people that make a lot of fuss internally are often the, the best too. Like like Paul King is a great <laughs> <child. laughs> I hope you're watching Paul. He's yeah. a he's a He's a lovely guy, I and mean, he's a very, very good franchise. Oh, I love him to pieces. Someone let Paul know but, that he's been... But yeah. Jeepers, does he have a go at me at times about <laughs> all kinds of things? Oh, not just you. There's other national staff all the time. No, other national staff. He's having a yeah. go at me today about um, you know, our proposal to ring franchisees when they leave. And he said, well, no, we should be given better support before they leave. So they don't you, want to leave. And I said, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Not, that's not an alternative, Paul. You can do both. Mm. So make sure um, someone lets Paul know that you've got to be able to wrap up then. So yeah. Don McInnes goes to take that Joel Kleber weightlifting comment. Yeah, I don't know. Weightlifting is a what do you say, punsy thing? Whatever. Come on. If you had, if thing, you had a yeah. real job, you know, <laughs> one that would naturally give you calluses in your hands, then you wouldn't need to weightlift. Do weightlifting. Mm -hmm. Mind you, I can't talk these days because I haven't pushed a mow around for some decades. But still, I used to do it. At least, at least I used to have a real job. <laughs> That's very and true. I get off my farm and actually do real work. It's not not just make work. I actually go and dig. I've got this giant patch. Um, the um, corn patch which I dug out from the earth. I just dug everything up myself physically and planted all the, and there's 4,000 cobs of corn coming up, which are going to sell for about a buck each because they'll make good some good You're money. always making money. You're always doing some side hustle or hustling, aren't you? 
Well, Negative the toilet that's, paper. That's my own physical work with, with, with my calloused hands. I, I am very proud so of it. So Jim's corn. We do have Jim's corn. We do. Jim's and corn. it's completely organic. There's not a, not a scrap of pesticides or herbicides or anything. The only thing put on is, is aged manure, which, which, which doesn't come into the corn, if anything. Are they, are they bigger than your traditional corns? No, no, they're the same size. Same they're, size. But they're just, they're There's just, no GM, no that sort of stuff on them. No, they just... They just Perfectly. You have to sell them back to Jim's Home Fresh. You can be a supplier for Jim's Home Fresh. The thing is, I never liked I never liked poisons and, and, and stuff. You know, I was a mowing contractor. I never never liked that kind of stuff because I always like things to be natural, even before the environmental movement. Because it's a big issue with Roundup, wasn't there? I remember there was a big yeah. issue with Roundup for a while. I think it's a pity actually. All this GM stuff. I mean, I, I'm a great believer in GM if you can make better products, but just making a product so it, you don't poison it with Roundup is, is just awful. So Rick Jergens gone. So is bookkeeping not a real job? Of course, bookkeeping is a real job. Jim's bookkeeping. We've got nearly 50 <laughs> franchisees doing quite well. Yeah, yeah it's, doing it's, really well. It's, it's real. I'm just having a go. That's all right <laughs> too. I like to, I like to have a go at this guy. Absolutely. Anytime you have a go, I mean, no dramas at all. Yeah, well, that's, right. what, that's what I pay you for, just to be made a. Just the jester, a figure, of, figure whipping of, boy, a figure of fun, yeah. a figure of fun, a figure, yeah. a figure of fun's the title. Fun. F O F, yeah, F O F. There we go. Well, I can tell you all the stuff I have to do when you when you put me through these interviews, and you never tell me what the questions are about. I mean, I should get my own back somehow, shouldn't I? Well, that's true. We've got some ripping videos tomorrow. I'm looking forward to them. Actually, they're going to be quite um oh, yeah. quite interesting, I think, to address some of those misconceptions off the comments because I cannot believe some of the comments I read online from people about how the franchising works or how Jim's franchising works. The amount of misinformation. It's yeah. hilarious. It's going to be quite funny. No, it is, it is funny about the lifetime I'm supposed to have, too. I wish <laughs> Oh, you've got a Gold, Ho Gold Coast penthouse, Jim. I do, don't I? Yes. Gold, House, Gold Coast penthouse. Not, not to speak of the Lamborghini and the second Lamborghini in the garage. It's all a facade, isn't yeah. it? This is all a facade. You've got the yeah. Armani suit, yeah, you've got the Rolex, you've got everything. That's right. This is an Armani jacket, I call it from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gee. How old that thing would be? I'll have a look at my Armani footwear, too. You know, this is quite oh, the <laughs> flip flops. This is. Because I've got a sore foot, so I'm wearing thongs, and, and they, are, they, are, they are special Lamborghini Armani thongs, straight from Kmart. So there you go. There you go, Chanel, Chanel thongs. No, nothing too good for, nothing too good for, for the, the owner of a multi-million dollar company. So there we go. So here's one question here, which is quite interesting. What's something you always wanted to do as a child but never got to do it? Question mark. I've never had it before. It's from one of the other feeds. Eat lots and lots of chocolate. <laughs> Which you do anyway. No, I don't. I try not to. The trouble oh, is, when yeah. you're a kid, you can't afford food. And when, you, and when you're an adult, you don't want to put on weight. I don't want, I don't want to get all pudgy. I mean, come on. Why are you pointing to me when you say that, all pudgy? Come uh, on, you're saying I'm pudgy. Come on. That's all muscle, Jim. It's all 100% Australian right. beef. Anyway, anyway, I still love chocolate, but I still don't eat it for, for the same reason. I do eat chocolate sometimes. I've seen you go hunting, though. We've got the home fresh box there, and I see you look to the side of it to see if there's any little... I'm just checking to make sure my, my, my staff ah. is, is behaving themselves. The whole idea of getting home fresh to deliver fruit every Monday morning, which is beautiful fruit for anybody who doesn't get them, they should. Mm -hmm. And um, in fact, they did so well that I might get three boxes because they all went so fast. They but what I've noticed is they have a lot less of chocolates and cakes and things. And I just check around and then I find out who put this down. I say, okay, what did you do that? <laughs> you do, but you secretly like it because you didn't take it. I do, I do. I, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 to be fair. To be fair, the only reason I take it is because I don't want my staff to put on weight, so I want to uh, save so, them from temptation. So, so I will take the chocolates myself to uh, make sure they only have healthy options. You're a hero, Jim. I am. You're the I, have, hero. I have a heart of gold, or, or, <laughs> or, or of chocolate, as they say, too. Well, when dealing with complaints, some franchisees say, "My say otherwise." No, I think, I think, I'm, I think, I'm, I think I'm Mr. Scrooge. <laughs> That's absolutely true. I think I'm the most horrible man in the universe when they get a complaint they don't like. It's very, very true. So we have a few questions coming. I'll just leave with these. So someone goes to me last week, Chris, we, question for Joel on a scale of 1 to 10. How, 10, how much do you like working for Jim? That's 11. So the answer is 11 out of 10, like working for Jim. And uh, we've got one here from Chris real quickly. If, Jim, if you could govern Australia for one day, what laws would you make slash change? That comes up quite a bit, this political oh, stuff. Oh, lots of things. Um, <laughs> What's one? Property taxes. Property tax. An, right. un, an unimproved a tax on unimproved, put a huge amount of taxes on the unimproved property and give everybody a, like a $150,000 allowance, personal allowance. That way the, the multi-millionaires um, in their penthouses in the Gold Coast, <laughs> if I had one, I'd pay a lot of tax on them. So they pay huge tax on yeah. people and it's unavoidable. It's a, way of, it's a fair way of taxing, of taxing wealth. Um, and other things too, like I'd have a carbon tax and get rid of all the and, and, and redistribute the wealth so that the people again who, who take luxury holidays in private jets pay a fortune and ordinary people get a bit of a discount. That kind of stuff. Now I'm gonna go real quickly. Paul King's gone. Yep. So Paul King's watching live. Paul King is actually watching. I hope you didn't hear the rude thing I said about you before, Paul. Or did you? Oh, we'll find out tomorrow. Jason Travis has gone. Why can you? This is, I want to just do something real quickly. He's gone. Why can someone 
So why can someone give you a rating of one to three but not leave a comment why they gave you that rating? Well, because the system lets them. We ask them for a comment. But, but you're saying, why can someone leave a rating of one to three? But yeah, so they have. So you're just saying you can take a one star rating, but they don't have to give a comment. That's what he's saying. I don't have right. to. Because, because uh, some people don't want to. But um, like I said, see, most, don't forget, most. And if you said there's no. If you said there's no. We don't take any rating without a comment, that would, you'd eliminate most of the, the, the unstar ratings, which is, which is yeah. five star ratings. Well, what's the proportion of ratings with comments then? As a question, that's a good one. I, I think. I think it's. I think it's. I think half or more. Or I don't half. Know, I don't. Right. Know. Okay. I think most most people leave comments. So most people who've got who've got who give low ratings give comments. Mm. But you can't just leave out the ones that are without comments that are low star because they'll distort things and you'll make it, a person appear better than they are. But like I said, the, the, you, you just got to follow up. If there's if there's a if there's a five star rating which has got no comments, obviously you don't need to do anything about that. But if it's got a low star rating, then can somebody follow up to see what's the what's the problem? What mm. can we do about it? Um, we actually send an automatic email too that goes through to the client to say we we're, we're really sorry the service wasn't good, which also invites a response, and so people often respond to that to me directly because it, it it comes as if it's straight from me. So then I, I, I'll, I'll put that feedback into the system. Or sometimes they'll just say, they'll say something like, oh, it was just a matter of, didn't like the price. Mm. So I just change it to a price. So they'll just say it was poor service or whatever, and I'll, change, I'll put a complaint in. So, yeah, that's a, that's a very good one. But you, have, but you, just, have to, you just have to get your franchise to chase it up. Yeah, very true. Or if you can contact the client yourself and you say, look, I'm sorry, I send them an email or a text, say, look, I'm really sorry he wasn't happy. What can I do about it? What was the issue? How can I help? And the client then texts back to say, look, and it was okay, I just thought the price was too much. Bang, straight to Jim and I'll, I'll change it. That's no, a good question. Thanks for commenting with that. But one, if, it's a, if it's a poor service one, you might not want to send it to me because I'll get a complaint out of it, which you otherwise <coughs> wouldn't. Because just because you've got one star, I don't register it as a complaint because I don't know why, because it could mm. be price. Mm. So I'll, only, I'll, only, I'll only put a, a complaint when I know there's a problem with the service, or at least what the client says is the problem. Thanks for that one, Jason. So Katie Redding's gone, hi, Jim and Joel. Katie from Jim's Dogwash here. It's my first week and I love it. She's saying it's the best decision I ever made and the support is amazing. Always good to that finish good. on positive good. notes. So the books, Jim, I've written down three which I would like to give it to with your permission, obviously. So Jason, I don't know if Jason's got one of these, but Jason, the franchisee regarding the star rating and asking follow-up questions and stuff like that, yep. that's what this platform we really like it for. Um, Glenn Carmichael in NZ, because Glenn Carmichael yes. raised no, that. No, we, we do need something better, and we will too. We'll put a notification and we'll have somebody chase up yeah. supplies. And we have to do that. And for Vicky Sherman, who's a customer, and unfortunately we have tried four services with the voucher and couldn't get anything, Vicky, so we can send you this signed book by Jim. It's not, not, um, it's not as good as, it's not as good. One of my crony books is not as good as actually <laughs> getting a great service done by Jim, but it's that, a bit of a compensation. It'll be a signed book, you know, and then we, uh, but we appreciate you, Vicky, as a customer, letting us know we, and actually we, hanging around we and trying multiple times. We're, we're, we're very sorry. It's, it's disappointing to me personally that we can't look after you. Better. It is. And uh, so thanks, everyone, for watching. Same time next week, if you're a franchisee, as you've seen tonight, leave, like uh, Jason and many others, leave comments and questions. And Glenn, the Glenn one was great with the New Zealand suppliers. That's going to be followed up. Yes. So if you are a franchisee, let your other franchisees know that this is the forum where they can get Jim's news mm. first time. It's way more better coming from here every week. You're going to find out what's going on Jim's than waiting for newsletters, which don't get read anyway. So it's Look, it's great to hear from franchisees. Yeah. So, uh, I don't think people realise how much of what we do is driven by that. I mean, just this whole business about ringing franchisees who are leaving actually came out of a conversation I had with the franchisee last week mm -hmm. and this was somebody who was who'd done fairly badly in one division but it was a very good franchisee he's, he's actually in skip bins right and he's a great franchisee like a really good rating did very well and then local competition has come along which has really cracked it up so when I started talking to him I said but hey do you understand that we'll give you some other, another franchise I said, we've got franchises with stacks of work available. I mentioned test and tag. I mentioned fencing. In your area, where there's plenty of work. And we're now talking to him about that. Right. But he didn't know. So what I, that was actually gave the inspiration to come back and say, okay, we need to set up a system that every franchisee who leaves, we actually get to talk to them first, and then we offer them, is well, there some yeah. way we can help you? Well, you don't want anyone leaving, and that's the point, right? I don't want anybody leaving. No. But certainly leaving for lack of work is something that shouldn't happen, because if you're a good operator, there's always going to be work available somewhere, somehow, and we can find you that work. Mm. So that's a great point, so make sure you tune in. Um, and you can stay anonymous as well. So if you don't want me to read your name or anything like that, 
Uh, make sure when you leave a question, just say I, stay I, I don't even ask. Unless I she don't. doesn't know. Any, I, unless, I, unless it's a couple of like Sharon or Hayda, you and I off the top of your head. But other than that. But I have a very thick skin in any case. Franchisees and franchisors are always having a go at me. <laughs> Speaking about you, Paul, I don't take it to heart. In fact, as long as you look after your customers or as a franchisor, look after your franchisee. I love you to pieces and you can say what you like. Very true. So just don't swear at me. I don't like that. That's true. So very thank you for all the comments and questions. We'll leave it there, guys. Same time next week, Wednesday. Let the other franchisees and Zors know. Meeting's the best way to do it. And anybody else who wants to... But well, that person, people watching about fencing or handyman, so please let us know how you go, which one you decide on after a trial day. Love to know. And email me, jim at jim.net, if you want any help, advice. There you go. So thanks, guys. We'll leave it there. See you next week at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock.